Good day everyone, Be Agent Dad here. Today we're gonna to do the unboxing and review of the Dell Latitude 7200 2-in-1. Now this is a convertible, so it's like those Surface lookalikes where you have a detachable keyboard. And this is the new model to replace the Dell Latitude 5290. So we'll do the comparison of this with this new one as well too. So let's get on with the unboxing. But before we get on the unboxing, we need safety first. So I've got my safety glasses on. Awesome. And we also, oh, while we're at it, I also have the new Dell pen. Now this is called the Dell Premium Active Pen. Now the model number is the PN 579X. So this is a bit, we'll do the unboxing of this as well. Now I'll probably do a side video of this pen about its features and how to operate it as well. But anyway, let's put it aside. I will also create a follow up video of this laptop and this will be more geared towards the designer artists and some of the testers that they would like to see. And I'll put the video in the description below and you might already see a little pop up here as well too. And let's get along with the unboxing. Of course, I've got my trusty knife here. Let's get this along. So, okay. Oh, okay, I've got that going through. Let's go do that. I think I'm going to do this one one more time. It's always good to save. Of course, I'll put the cover back on. I'll probably need to it back. Actually, while I'm at it, I might as well do the pen slit as well too. Now, I've got to be careful. It's pretty small there. Here we go. We got it done. All right. Let's chuck this onto the side. All right, let's see what's in here. Now, I do know an old version, you do need to actually purchase the keyboard by itself, but this one now comes with the keyboard automatically. I don't know why they left it out by itself. All right, let's have a look. So this is how it's all packed up here, see? So again, we've got power charger and the cable for the power charger. Now, let's have a quick look. The power charger here that comes with, is 65 watts that's pretty typical now that i've seen lots of the dell lab trick series come with it and we've got another thing here now this is probably the actual cover the type cover so that's the keyboard now it's nice to see the dell's gone mostly cardboard here so it's good to see that's recyclable this means more sustainability for that then that's a plastic there and then we've got the laptop itself here. I'll just put it down to the side. And what else have we got here? Documentation. Who loves documentation? Let's chuck that away. All right, I'm gonna grab all this. That's all the cardboard here. We'll keep that here anyway. So here we have oh, the laptop itself. Oh, bit of tape. Let's get rid of that tape away. Wow, there it is. Very beautiful, isn't it? And it's got a bit of a silver backing to it as well. And it's got a kickstand as always. So I'm gonna put it to the side. Let's get this cover going anyway. So let's have a look at the cover. I need my knife again, looks like. Oh, okay, now you can do both sides of it. Okay. Awesome. Let's get along with this. Okay, so like I said, yep, there's the cover. Now they've actually changed this cover to Silver, I can see. Uh, it's just box and more and more documentation, and we've got plastic here. More cover plastic. Let's get rid of move all that stuff. There, oh, let's get rid of it. And oh, definitely a bit of felt on the back end now to it. And plastic, yeah, a bit of plastic, but it's got a bit of an aluminium sort of feel to the plastic now. So it's actually maybe aluminium. But no, it feels still like plastic, but it's just got a nice sort of smooth aluminium finish. It's a very small coating, I have a feeling, and the cover itself. Keyboard wise, still is very similar to its old one there. Anyway, I'm gonna chop this all, so as you can see, pretty much. Oh, missed it. It's all magnetic anyway. Mm. It likes to pop out by itself very easily, doesn't it? Wow. Okay. Anyway, so supposedly. If we just do this, it will automatically kickstands. I remember there was something about automatic kickstands. I'll just show that to you again one more time. Supposedly you can actually, this, um, the cover itself has this little button onto the bottom top of these things. So, and I think you can pretty much, I'll just do it again here. So you just push down, it automatically does the kickstand by itself. 
pretty sweet feature. I love it. It looks pretty cool. I'll do it one more time just for the sake of it. Yeah, how cool is that? All right, that's a new feature of the 7200. They didn't have in the 5900, uh, sorry, 5290 anyway. So that's nice. And of course, down, down here. Now, I do feel, I'm going to just, before I get onto it, uh, the keyboard does feel, I don't know, it feels a little bit more weightier than the previous one. But let's get back onto it anyway. Now, I will be doing a line test or jitter test with the pen near the end of the video. So be sure to check that out. So let's have a look at the ports here. So on the right side, we have two Thunderbolts. Now that's an improvement since the 5290. That used to be on a USB-C 3.1s, but this is now Thunderbolt enabled, which is great. And the bottom one is where you actually charge the laptop itself. So coming along and we see the SD card reader. Now this is a micro SD card reader. Now that's been improved. That used to be underneath the kickstand. Now it's not. And this one's just a push, which is really easy to get in and out for the micro SD card read. Fantastic. And then we got the volume button, an audio jack, and on the top hand side, it's pretty much nothing clear besides the power button. On the left hand side here, we've got your normal USB A, which is USB 3.1, and we've got a noble lock and some speakers as well. So it's great there. And of course, on the other side, I forgot to say there's speakers on the other side as well. So at the bottom here, we have the connector for the keyboard cover. Now let's see what, how far the kickstand can go. Again, this new nice little feature of popping that up. Okay, so let's we'll just keep pushing it down. That's pretty much as far as it goes. We've also got a 1080p webcam. And of also it's got a second camera here at the back here. That's for the world facing as well. And we don't really need this. We've done enough unboxing for this. Let's take that off anyway. Now in the US, the 7200 can be purchased for under a grand. Now that's the i3 version. For the i5 version, you're looking at $1,560 US. Now in Australia, the i5 version is $2,560. As for the weight of the 7200, on the Dell website, it states it's 935 grams. But when I weighed this, this particular model was 820 grams. Now with when it's weighed with the keyboard cover, it was 1.15 kilos. So the actual cover keyboard is actually quite heavy. But of course, most of the time you do have that on. So you'll probably consider it 1.15 kilos there. The 7200 is still using the eighth generation Intel CPUs and it is configured up to 16 gigs of RAM, which is soldered to the motherboard and it can configure up to one terabyte of SSD. Now that is not soldered to the computer, so that is serviceable, so it can be plugged out, plugged in. So that's really fantastic there. Now it doesn't have any discrete graphics in there, so it is using the Intel integrated graphics. For the battery life, it is quite interesting. Dell has actually put a smaller battery in the 7200. It's now a two cell battery compared to the three cell battery. Now I was getting five hours on average use for 50% brightness. Now that was a base, pretty much a combine of just YouTubes and opening softwares like Photoshop and doing the pen sort of things. But pretty much you're looking around about anyway between two hours to five hours on this computer here. As for the battery charging, it does have express charge, which means you can do 80% of the battery in one hour's charge. So with my timings there, I managed to get it to 50% to see how long it takes to charge to 100%, and that took an hour and 20 minutes. As for a dead battery from zero to 100, it takes an hour and 50 minutes. As for the operation noise of this computer, I barely even heard it. Even if it barely even had much of the fan turn itself on, even when I was using Photoshop and Krista and doing a few of the other testers and YouTube and things like that, it barely even turned on the fan. So it did extremely well and it wasn't really been hot to actually touch. It was actually only just barely warm. So it actually does extremely well in keeping itself cool. And I didn't really hear much of it. And when I actually did the stress tests on it, it wasn't that loud neither too. So very, very quiet computer. Liking that a lot. Dell has made the 7200 even more serviceable 
at the back of it now they actually have got screws holding the back end of it instead of using a glue system so it's actually very easy to actually open up one of these up now all these screws are your normal typical Phillips head style so none of those crazy annoying different types of special screws now you can pretty much upgrade the parts of it like for example if you didn't purchase the Bluetooth you can add the Bluetooth module you can add the wireless module the only thing you can't change is the RAM so you make sure you actually get the right correct RAM for when you purchase this initially now the, the screen on this is 400 nits brightness so it's actually quite bright and I did test this out in broad daylight and it was quite happily I was around about 50% brightness and I can quite easily see pretty much all the screen and all the text and the pictures as well so if I bring it up to 100 that would have been no problems at all I got some feedback about these laptops who are like two ones where they have detachable keyboards they're not that great for frequent travelers who travel a lot on planes and on long distance trains as well and like to work on their laptop now the reason why is when they're on the trains or planes that have trays the actual laptop itself is on sitting on those trays where you have your food put on now because it's running off the kickstand you pretty much have to either have the kickstand up pretty much to the edge of the edge of the front of a tray which is say imagine this is the seat here the uh, the seat in front of you and pretty much you can't go too far back itself um, because pretty much it will fall over because it's relying on the kickstand to keep itself upright now the only other way is to actually even make it more slimmer and then after that you pretty much then you won't have the best ideal sort of viewing angle so you'll probably have the kick strain out which means you push this forward and then the, you get the other problem is the keyboard would like to try and detach itself all the time because that's this magnet is not that strong as you can see it pulls off pretty easily by itself as i'm not even putting any pressure now at the moment just pulling itself off um, so that will then detach the keyboard and then it's no longer working so it'll come off the other side of the tray itself so the only other way is to actually take off the keyboard completely and use try use the onboard uh, on-screen keyboard there and that's not really great and then you'll be flipping into that sort of system and then therefore not that great so if you're a high frequent traveler go with a clamshell sort of type of laptop you'll be better for it so let's compare the latitude 7200 with the latitude 5290 now in terms of brightness they're pretty much on par as for the keyboard pretty has the same sort of touch feel through it I do kind of like the uh, um, this nice need keyboard it feels a little bit nicer than the felt itself as for the key wise um, this has a bit of more of a nicer like smoother finish to it but key travel wise they're nearly the same and as for the trackpad I think the new one is has been improved feels more like a MacBook um, trackpad there so it has a really nice feel to it I do kind of like that and of course the finish is very different because this one's got more of a smoother finish to it compared to the old felt sort of type of style so overall I think I might actually like the new cover of this but I definitely know when you take the keyboards away from each one you'll actually feel that definitely the new keyboard is a lot heavier than the old keyboard this was a lot lighter um, this is nearly about a third more in weight compared to the old one that's what I feel in a way but in terms of weight wise uh, between the two the 7200 does feel lighter without the keyboard than the old 5290 you can see with the cover on they're both pretty much the same now once you actually take the cover off the 7200 is only just marginally thinner green wires they really didn't do that much in the bezel they're pretty much nearly the same the 7200 here and the 5290 right here as for sound wires I did test them out between the two and volume wise they're both about the same at its most loudest what was different though was interesting enough was when they were both set at the most loudest they can point the new 7200 it was way more crispier than the old 5290 now what I mean by crispiness it didn't do much distortion it was actually quite clear 
all the sound that it produced and also you find this the 7200 is way more bassier so this felt a little bit more tinier so the speakers on this has been improved massively i quite like the sound of it now as for like how loud it was it was pretty much enough for being a notebook at this sort of size interesting thing that might be asked is can the old keyboard fit the 7200 well let's try that okay let's take that out of the way and i'll take this one out of the way and let's see if it'll fit now it will magnetically fit but it won't actually fit now the reason why is because the do the actual little points here these two pots pretty much it won't work it won't fit because they are kind of offset a little bit so no you can't use the old keyboard for the 7200 i know the old keyboard is a little bit lighter than the new keyboard but unfortunately it won't work there now the pen in australia retails for 157 dollars now it used to be the previous generation was 80 dollars so that's nearly double in price but what do you get for double the price well you also get double the sensitivity so it used to be 2048 levels of sensitive now is 4092 levels of sensitivity so that's double the sensitivity now this is probably very useful for digital artists so this now becomes very the same as what the new surface pen is so and that's pretty good one of the improvements Delve has made for the 7200 is the pen is now magnetic to the computer now and that's on one of the sides and it just pretty much sticks to the sides just like the Surface Pro fantastic and it's actually quite a strong magnet too so it's actually quite good so it needs to be on the flat end of one end and you'll pretty much hear it because pretty as you see it's pretty pretty strong I'm going to do the line test or the jitter test so I'm just going to slowly do the diagonal lines now to be honest I am not an artist in any form so I'm actually kind of surprised I'm actually making straight lines here so that's doing pretty good for my skill level I'm actually going to also bring in a ruler see how that goes as well oops so all the goes wow that's interesting with the ruler and I'm just going to do some quick lines here to see how it goes it's not bad on quick lines I'll just do some horizontal lines not too bad horizontal seems to be okay-ish I'm going to do some circles I don't have any smoothing on at the moment that's not bad at all now I'm just going to do Photoshop the pressure so I'm being very light and now being very heavy and light again even heavy light heavy light heavy light so it does do pressure and that's probably because I've got such a small I'll make it a little bit bigger oh yeah so very light heavy light heavy light heavy light all right so that kind of gives you an idea of that test there I'm now also going to do a tilt test now I'm not very familiar with this so what I found is this damping thing can do tilt so I can see from here that I've got it now 90 degrees I can also see it does rotation as well because I'm just hovering and I can see it's actually doing rotation of a bit of a pen um, and also as I tilt it I can see it's getting wider so that's kind of cool so that's just what it looks like when it's 90 degrees and this is and you can see it's actually moving for the tilt so I can definitely see there's tilt um, recognized in Photoshop now in tilt Krista here it's a different story so 
I tried on the paintbrush four, five, sorry, paintbrush five, and I can't even get the pressure to work. So I've actually had a look at the settings. So I've got pressure here, pressure in. I don't, I don't know if I'm not very familiar with the software itself. So if any, if any of you guys know how to make that work, would be fantastic. Um, same with the tilt. Ooh. So I can see from here, these ones should be tilt. These pencil ones here. Um, so some tilting, but it doesn't do anything different. So side tilt makes no difference there so i don't know if it chris actually recognizes tilt function on this um, i can see this tilt elevation tilt i'll just take all of these save save i can try again but now it's gone small but not really making it work here so if you can any ideas how to make tilt work or even pressure, it would probably be helpful to some of the other digital artists who was looking to buy this. Other digital artists that might be looking at buying this to work with Krista. But at the moment, I'm not very able to do that. I'll again just do the line test here on Krista so you can see the jitter test. That's all right, and I'll just do it for ruler as well. Whoa, look at that. That's interesting. I've just pressed down here, so that's interesting. Whoa, I don't know how that happens, but I hope if I won't press down too hard then. But you will hopefully see at least the jitter there. I don't know how that happens if you've got ideas as a dig digital artist. Uh, you can tell me why that does that. That's interesting. Anyway, and we'll just do some circles as well. That's not bad. That's pretty good. Just gonna change to another brush. Looks to be very similar there. I'm going to create a new layer. And we're just gonna look at the parallax, which is like a kind of a lag. Now I didn't find too much lag for this one. I'm actually quite liking this one actually a fair bit. The old one I did try very quickly and I like I said I'm not an artist. Um, and I found that one very laggy, so which is probably now I found out it's called Parallax. This one's not bad, this one's got a pretty good following and it's pretty good, I probably could use that. So there you have it. If you have any questions about this laptop, put a comment below and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video or find it informative, give it a like. And if you haven't done already, subscribe to the channel by hitting that subscribe button on the bottom right hand corner. I do try to upload a new video every Tuesdays and Fridays. And as always, remember, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. I'll see you next video.